Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Ken Vita with Paradigm Futures. And we're seeing uh, grains lose some of their early strength here, trading mostly lower livestock. We're lower in the hogs now and trying to recover today in the cattle market. And Kent, I want to talk about the grain trade first of all. Like I said, we lost some of that early strength, even though the outside markets seem a little more risk on today. So is the commodity sector, is the grain sector still concerned about maybe the Fed meeting tomorrow? What's going on there? Well, I, th I think there's just a lot of worry. And, and, you know, when we we'll just start off in soybeans, where we saw last week is the commitments of traders uh, kind of got themselves close to being caught up that we still had a near record uh, position in the in uh, in the speculative length uh, in soybeans. And, um, you know, when you have these uncertain events and nobody knows if this is really a black swan or not, but it's, you know, it's worrisome. And uh, when traders get worried about the situation, their tendency is to sell now and ask the questions later. And I think we've been seeing that um, primarily in beans and in the soybean oil. Uh, those have been the areas that uh, have we've had the, the greatest weakness, of course, after recovering nicely in corn and wheat last week. Uh, but we had higher markets uh, to open and we do have a Fed meeting tomorrow, as you mentioned. Um, there's an, a lot of uncertainty about what Fed Chairman Powell might do and, and even more importantly, how the markets might react to any decision he makes, whether it's to uh, um, you know, whether it's to hold uh, rates steady or to increase what is going to be the market reaction to those different potential outcomes. And, uh, you know, could it give us another down leg in equity markets and, and you know, sort of signal that the uh, the that the Fed is is uh, somewhat worried about the banking system and how might that impact our uh, consumer confidence? And so all of those things just seem to be weighing on traders minds as we go into you know, what is a pretty big Fed meeting tomorrow. Yeah, and you guys, you and I have talked about how that impacts money flow over in the commodity sector, obviously. Wheat market as well here, um, pressure there, Black Sea export corridor, it looks like it's gonna be extended that deal, but it's kind of frustrating to watch uh, the crop rating state by state, a few improvements, but overall that crop is not in very good condition and it feels like the market really isn't respecting that at all. No, I would say that it's not, um, you know, when you're dealing with uh, essentially about 75% of a crop that is in, you know, a fair to poor condition, it's, uh, it's not um, really being traded. But the thing that um, we all kind of know is that uh, traders in, in wheat uh, understand that if you get rainfall in the spring, uh, the condition ratings can kind of be thrown out. Um, uh, some good rains this spring could really turn that crop around as it comes out of dormancy. And so, um, you know, as we've had different patterns uh, somewhat shift here this winter as we're moving out of a La Nina and into more ENSO neutral type territory, uh, I think a lot of folks think that at least there's better chances for rain in the Southern Plains than maybe we would have had previously. And uh, so they just don't want to put as much stock in the current condition ratings. Yeah. So when will the market start trading some of these problems if it does? Well, uh, as we get into uh, as we get into mid-April and May, and as that crop comes out of dormancy, we'll get a much better uh, look at uh, you know how well does it green up and and how uh, uh, what kind of conditions do we see at that point in time, and then we'll have. Uh, weather forecasts that are a little closer. Um, you know, right now we've got an awful lot of, uh, um, you know, equal chances in the in the 30 day and 90 day forecasts about moisture in in, the, in a good part of the country. And so we're just going to have to wait and see how that weather pattern ultimately, um, you know, uh, comes at us as we get, you know, closer to the important time for the, you know, for the reproductive uh, uh, time in the wheat and the heading and, um, you know, ultimately harvest. Right. right. The, the other part of the market, we talked about soybeans, but really, do you feel like that market is respecting the tight U.S. and global ending stocks that we have, especially as Argentina's crop continues to be pulled down? Yeah. So um, we're doing two separate things right now. We're liquidating out a speculative position and yet we are 
increasing the size of the inverse while we maintain uh, relatively tight basis levels. So what this is, you know, this is telling us is that the market in some respects is uh, respecting uh, the situation. We are, uh, you know, heavily inverting the market in order to try and get more bushels moving into the marketplace. Uh, but it's not at this point showing up in flat price. We're, uh, you know, about 70 cents a bushel off of the recent highs and the, re and the resistance that we have up in that 1540 to 1550 area. So um, maybe not surprising that we're doing that in the beans because uh, the CFTC kind of got itself caught up last week. And we found out that, um, you know, while they had been liquidating corn and they had been getting shorter in the wheat market, they had maintained their length in soybeans. And, you know, what's been happening in beans here recently feels like, uh, you know, the speculator just kind of catching up in beans, what they had already done in wheat and what they had already done in corn. Yeah, those forward spreads you talk about in soybeans, we've also seen that in the corn market. That's been a big attribute, obviously tied to this China business, I would assume. Yeah, that's that's some of it. And, and you know, there's been some other corn business as well. Uh, you know, we finally started to see some sales into Japan, into South Korea. Uh, U.S. corn is now the cheapest corn in the world and is likely going to be for the next four to five months. A lot of folks wanting to talk about a large uh, safrina crop in Brazil, uh, but we have to get there, okay? And, and uh, you know, that crop is not assured, uh, but we are going to have the marketplace in corn um, as, we, uh, as we look through here the, the spring and the summer and until the safrina crop is on, uh, uh, in the bin and ready to get moved and the uh, and the uh, South American soybean program winds down, uh, we're going to have uh, a, a decent amount of corn exports, I believe. And of course, this pullback in the board price from uh, the high, you know, six seventy to seven dollar area down into the lower sixes, uh, that certainly helps as well. Yeah, and hopefully we'll see an improvement in exports in this weekly report after all that China business from last week and get start to get cut up. So the yep. cattle market, uh, two-sided, we've had that big pullback here since we started these banking concerns and the nervousness there. Do you think we're going to be able to recover here pretty soon? Well, I think there's a chance that we can recover. The fundamentals are, are still reasonably solid. But like a lot of uh, our other markets, especially in the grains, what we've been doing is you know, working through some technical liquidation. And the cattle market was uh, uh, you know, certainly well-positioned to the bullish side. We did some technical damage relative to trend lines and some moving averages here over the last couple of weeks. And so right now what you're seeing is when you get a little bit of strength in the cattle market, that triggers some more of that liquidation. Um, ultimately, we're going to find that uh, you know the market, will, if it wants to discount itself to the cash trade, and the cash trade ultimately holds together as we anticipate that it will, uh, then we should see a recovery in these futures. And speaking of technical damage, boy, we've done that in spades in the hog market. Funds seem to be selling on any strength in that market. Where's the bottom going to come in, Ken? Yeah, well, um, that the you have a little more fundamental problem in the hogs than you do in the cattle, and you know it comes from a couple places. Number one, uh, there's a lot of concern right now that ASF is actually regaining a foothold in China. Uh, what that does is it actually puts a lot of meat onto the marketplace in that market uh, as there's a liquidation that starts to occur to try to stop its spread. And so um, that's part of the issue. We've also seen larger supplies on the front end than, uh, than some of the hog and pig reports may have indicated we should have. And so it's been a little easier for the packer to buy hogs. And that has also, um, you know, contributed to our, our little bit weaker price structure and, and a lower cutout. Um, you know, can we find some support? I think that we ultimately will. I mean, you know, keep in mind that we should start to see uh, numbers come down seasonally. We tend to uh, we tend to improve in this time frame. We just might not ultimately get as high as we thought that we might get this summer uh, because of the larger supply that we have here domestically. Okay, let's hope we find the bottom soon. Thanks so much for joining us, Ken Beetle with Paradigm Futures. That's Markets Now.